Welcome to OneNote 2010 Overview. I'm Trainer Lori. What is OneNote? Well, it's a virtual notebook, just like a paper one, only it's electronic. So you can take notes collaboratively, organize content, and then share those notes. Uh, you can ha have multiple notebooks open at one time, multiple sections in each notebook. Um, multiple pages can be shared instantly, easily. Plus, you can keep it open and link continually from other documents that you happen to have, like PowerPoint or Word or even the Internet. To create a new notebook, go to File New and you choose where you want to store it. If you're going to store it on the web, like through SharePoint or through Live, if you're going to share it on a network, uh, like a shared drive, or if you're going to share it on your own personal computer. If it's on a shared network, then you can share it with other people and work collaboratively on it. Then give it a name, just like in Access. Access is a database, and this is a database too, only here the database is of uh, all kinds of things, including handwritten notes, um, things that you might see on the internet, multimedia, but you have to give it a name before you can do anything else. And then choose where you're going to save it, and then hit Create Notebook. It will say, do you want to create a link to other people because you're going to be sharing this collaboratively? And if that's the case, how handy is that? Otherwise, you can simply say no thanks. And then you can see that it's been saved. And because there are other notebooks over here, you can see them all, but the one we just created is here. Now the interface, if you'll notice, you cannot see the ribbon. You can see the tabs, but not the ribbon. And they did that up by default so that you would have more real estate, more place uh, to put your notes. But if you click that little carrot on the side here, then this will allow it to expand. You can also double click on a tab and it will make it expand. If you only want to expand it for a, a moment or two, then just single click it on the tab and it will do that. If you right click in um, a note area, then you'll get all the tools that you could get off your home tab. So you may not need to see your home tab while you're, while you're working. You notice that there's more carrots. These are flyout carrots. And when you click those, you can expand your real estate even farther so that you have a larger, clean slate on which to put your notes. Your OneNote is created. You can see all the notebooks on the side, sections across the top, and then your pages will be down the right side. If we want to create a new page, there's lots of ways to do it. So one way is to, you can see that this is the name of the page. Right now it's untitled because there's nothing in this title area. But as soon as I type in overview, then it changes here as well as here. So that's where you're going to see the names of your pages. And then this little icon, if you click and drag the icon, that will create a new page wherever you've dragged it to. That's one way to create a new page. You can right click on the name of a page and you have multiple options in there including deleting and copying, but there's also a new page option. And if you click the drop down here, then you get the option for new page, new sub page, and you actually have two levels of sub page in 2010, and page templates. Page template, by default, these are all built in. There's academic, there's some blank, there's business. So if you've never created meeting notes before, it's there, and you can always find more online. So here's the meeting notes, and you can see the headers are already put in. All I have to do is fill in the blanks. How convenient is that? Now I mentioned subpages, and so you can see this is a, a main page, and then it has two subpages, and then another main page. So it's darker; the the uh, background is darker, and then this is a subpage, and then there's yet a, a second level subpage, and you do have two levels of subpage in 2010. Sections are what uh, each of the pages are made up into. So if you uh, look at sections, you can right click on the tab and you have multiple options there, including renaming, save as, and you can see you can save not only as a OneNote section, that means you can actually send it to somebody, email it to somebody if they have OneNote, but if they don't, you can send it to them as a web page, a PDF, or even a Word document. So you can save that section separately. You also have the option to delete, to merge into other sections, to copy a link, create a new section or a section group. If you shift click on multiple sections, you can put them all into a group. It's a good way to delete an entire section, uh, a whole bunch of sections at once as well, is to put them into a group.
You can password protect a section so that if uh, each person is responsible for a different section, you don't want them to be other people to be able to change your section, then you can do that. You can also change the colors of the tabs, which makes a lot of sense, so you can easily tell them apart. If you take a, a paper notebook and you turn it sideways, you can see the tabs, and that's how you can visualize the tabs up here. So that's why you might want multiple colors. And also, each section in a paper notebook would have multiple pages, same way in our electronic OneNote. So there's a new section. If you hover over the tab name, you can see what it's called. So you can um, copy it and send it to somebody, send it uh, as an email, for example. If you hover over the uh, file name, the actual um, notebook name, you can see its name as well. There's a lot of sections there. Now we have our sections and we have our pages, but we want to add content. So simply click anywhere and start typing, and it creates an, a note area, a content area. And those content areas can be easily moved. You can drag and move them on the same page, or you can copy or cut them and paste them in different sections so you can organize your thoughts. If you have, uh, for example, PowerPoint, and you want to be able to take some of the things from PowerPoint and put it in uh, to your notes, you go to the Review tab and you can see Link Notes there. When you click that, it says what uh, notebook would you like to put it in and what section would you like to put it in? And when you do that, it automatically opens up the uh, docked version of OneNote. It stays there. But now, when I start typing, whatever that slide is, this slide is now linked to this place in OneNote. And you can see there's text there, but also there's a link now between this, this um, PowerPoint and this note. And if you hover over the icon, you can see the slide that it is linked to. So even when PowerPoint is closed, you can you can uh, it'll jog your memory, and it'll be uh, it's a two-way link. That means that when you're in PowerPoint, you can always open up OneNote and see the link, or if you're in OneNote, uh, you can double-click the link, and it'll open up the PowerPoint. If you want to change how the links are working, if you want to unlink them, for example, or if you just simply want to disable it. That you don't want to delete it, you just simply want to disable it for a while, make some changes to the presentation, something like that, and then re-enable it. You can do that as well. But let's say that I, I just stuck some content there, but I really don't want it there. I want to move it into a different section. So I can click and drag around it, or I can shift-click. And uh, as I click on each item, uh, it will be remembered. But it, I like to click and drag around and make that magic box. And then Control-C or right-click, and you can copy it. Now when I go to paste it, I like to use Control-V for Velcro. Or, of course, you can use your, your paste tools up on the ribbon. And notice it becomes an exact duplicate of what I've created. This happens to be a hand-drawn something. Uh, by the way, it's, uh, this is a great use for tablets, and if you have a, a stylus to write on your tablet, it will keep track of that. But let's say I don't want to copy it and paste it as itself. That happens to be the default. I can change that. See, that's the source formatting. I can change that because there are four options here. And notice I can also choose which one I want as the default. You can also merge formatting if you have multiple different formatting styles. Or, look at this, if you've handwritten it on a tablet or using your mouse, it will automatically turn it into text. Isn't that amazing? And I had actually had two dots here. I don't know if you can see. One dot and then I had the exclamation point and it, it read both of the dots. So that turns it into texts. Or, if I want it as an image only, and this means it is uneditable, except in an image software like Photoshop then uh, or Illustrator, then I would uh, use the last one if I don't want anybody to make any changes. But if this is something you're going to be revising on a regular basis, I don't recommend that you use that one. Drawing is a lot of fun, and you can use lots of tools here. You can choose the size, the color, um, and even uh, the, the kinds of shapes and things that you want it to be. This is just handwritten uh, using a pen. How cool is that? If you have something on, for example, in, uh, on the internet that you want to be able to put into there, you, you've found something, you can use the screen clipping option and it 
grays out or um, puts this white mask over the screen. It goes back to the last thing you had open and you have uh, your crosshair cursor. Click and drag what you do want. Instantly it becomes a clip in OneNote with the URL and a date and timestamp. Now you can delete those if you want, but that is pretty cool. That way you can see exactly when it was put in. If you want to share your content, you have multiple options. For example, if I want to see somebody else made some edits. I've been gone for a couple of days and I want to know what happened. So you can choose when you're going to see the edits for. And if you want to see them highlighted immediately, hit Control Q and that will mark them. So you can see that uh, this was recently made because it has a screen behind it. If you want to find edits by a specific person, then uh, click Find by Author and uh, this new window is uh, docked on the side and it will list everybody that's uh, working on the document. And if you decide that you do want to share a notebook that you did not create to share, then you can still do that. You go to File Share and just like what we saw earlier and you choose how you want to share it. When you open a document, it will show, the, based on uh, the recent edits, that whatever you chose, it will show all the recent edits. And notice it puts in uh, initials, hover over the initials, and it'll give their name, and it'll have a date and time stamp so you can see when it was made. If your um, project involves doing something as a result, having tasks as a result of uh, something that you've written down, you want to remember to do it, then you can actually uh, send it right to Outlook and put it right in your tasks. You simply right click on it or if you prefer you can come up here to the ribbon and choose Outlook Tasks and you can choose when is it going to be due. And notice there's also those keyboard shortcuts so you simply click it and hit Control Shift 1 and it becomes a today to, uh, task on your to-do list. And you can see it took the text and you can share it with other people. It linked to the actual uh, OneNote. This is very important because I've had a lot of people ask me about this. Under File Options you can see here we have the option for Save and Backup because it is a database you'll want to create a backup. That means you don't want only one copy of this. If you have lots of people using it, oops, what if somebody accidentally deletes the whole thing? And that is very possible. So uh, it's a good idea to have a backup. I know some people that uh, keep the backup on their computer and then put the um, main uh, d database in the shared location. That's, that's probably a good idea. So you get to choose where you want the um, backup to be. Thanks for joining us. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please click like and we'll see you next time. Bye.